Hi, I'm Jim Setzer with Images by Design. November is Men's Health Month in the U.S., and so I've got this scruffy beard that I can't wait to shave off in a few days. Um, but today we're here to take a look at a new product. This is the Loop Deck editing console for Adobe Lightroom. Loop Deck sent me this copy uh, for evaluation. I did not pay for it, but they are not paying me to endorse their product either. Packaging is nice, contemporary. This outer sleeve has a short description on the front and the system requirements in about 10 different languages on the back. Taking off that sleeve and popping off the cover of the case. This guy's nice padding, should be able to ship anywhere without any damage. There's the console in the box. Comes out, USB cable and a little protective cardboard tube. And then below that, uh, just a legal manual and a quick getting started guide. That's all that's in the package. So let's see what this guide says. Take it from there and let's plug this thing in and put it through its paces. The getting started guide points you first to the Loop Deck website where you can download the version of the control software for your system, Macintosh or Windows. Once you've downloaded and installed that software, you get this nice splash screen that says you are now ready to finally plug the Loop Deck into a USB port. And now you're presented with a screen where you can customize a few of the buttons on the Loop Deck, but we'll get into that a little bit later. For now, let's take a look at the layout of the buttons and controls on the Loop Deck. The loop deck is comprised of a number of infinite scroll knobs, buttons, scroll wheels, and jog dials. Each of them is also a button that will reset that value back to zero or the center of the slider in Lightroom. While the loop deck is primarily designed to work in the develop module of Lightroom, a number of the keys on this console can be used in the library module. Starting over here, the undo and redo buttons are mapped to control Y and control Z for backing up and moving forward. Full screen, which is your F key shortcut, uh, does the same thing there. Before and after actually jumps you into the develop module and gives you that familiar side-by-side -side preview. Export brings up the export dialog box. These cursor keys work exactly the same as your keyboard. The zoom key works, as well as this second zoom key that seems to be an exact duplicate. Uh, I think they could have used that real estate for something unique. This row of buttons here will select your star ratings, one through five, or toggling using this button, they become your color ratings red through purple. Copy and paste will copy and paste a photograph settings. Pick will turn on the pick flag and if you notice there's this FN button which is like a shift button or the function button on a laptop keyboard and while pressing and holding that button most of these have an alternate function. For example holding down the FN button and pressing pick will set the reject flag. Starting at the very top of Lightroom's Develop Module Panel Set. Just below the histogram is where you set your crop, apply a brush, filters, and those sorts of things. The crop and the brush have a dedicated button here. Brush just puts you in brush mode, and this jog dial button uh, goes into crop mode, and the dial allows you to uh, rotate the crop. Below that, you have your basic controls panel. And that's where you set things like color, temperature and tint, vibrance and saturation down near the bottom of that panel. You've got your highlights and whites, your shadows and your blacks. Here, contrast, clarity, and exposure. You also have the color black and white button. Scrolling down to Lightroom's adjustments panel, this is where you set the color settings for hue, saturation, and luminance. Clicking this little set of radio buttons selects between those three modes and your color wheels here are used to fine tune adjust the various color bands. Beyond that, the loop deck gives you a number of user definable buttons as well. 
this dial button here, controller one, these two buttons here can be mapped to most Lightroom functions in the develop module. This set of buttons P1 through P8 can be mapped to any preset you have in Lightroom, whether that be something you bought or built, or the loop deck comes with a set of presets as well. And each of these programmable buttons has an alternate. So if you hold down the function button, this dial takes on a different functionality based on how you programmed it. I've been working with the loop deck now for about a month and I've been incorporating it into most of my editing sessions. And uh, let me share with you my overall thoughts. Um, while the loop deck is moderately priced, around $300 US, um, I found the, the build quality very nice. Um, these knobs and dials, they're not going to behave like a $5,000 video editing deck. Um, they do have a, a pretty good feel to them. All the buttons are uh, got a rubber coating to them that gives them a nice, easy to feel touch. Uh, the overall layout I've gotten used to, just like anything, it takes a little bit of muscle memory to remember exactly where these buttons and, and dials are because the idea there is eventually you get to the point where you're not even having to look down at this deck. You keep your eyes to the screen, eyes on your image as you're making these adjustments. Um, I found that quickly I was able to increase my workflow just by having a dial that I can sit there and adjust by hand while I'm looking at my picture until I get the desired look. Um, and the adjustment sensitivity is adjustable with that control console as well. So you can make these very, very fine adjustments. The buttons feel nice. The tactile feedback, every once in a while I found that maybe I hit the pick button, but it didn't take. Um, so I'd like a little bit more tactile feedback with those buttons. Overall, I'm probably using most of the buttons on the deck um, now that I've gotten used to it. I really wish we had dedicated buttons for the other filters that go along with the brush and other things for, for that part of it. Um, you're still going to need your pointing device for doing cropping. This only rotates the crop, uh, which is great for doing some quick uh, horizon adjust corrections or whatever, but uh, you're not going to be able to do all of your crop editing with just this console. You're still going to have to be able to reach for a pointing device to do that. Same thing with these customizable buttons. There are so many other panels in Lightroom that I use that uh, I would like to take those most common buttons and have them here on the loop deck to be able to be used. For example, if I was a architecture uh, photographer, I would really want those transform controls because I'm always warping and, and adjusting things. Um, as a landscape photographer, you're going to want to have that dehaze uh, slider at, at hand, and that's actually what I've mapped this button to. Portrait photographers are more likely to have the split toning and the details panels mappable so that they can work in all those. So my overall impression, is this loop deck right for you? Uh, I guess the answer is, it, like anything in life, it depends. If, if you find the controls that are hard-coded here constitute most of your workflow in Lightroom, uh, then I think you will find, in general, this you're going to speed up your workflow. This is going to be a big benefit. If most of the controls are uh, in those other panels that don't have a mapping here, it's not going to help you all that much. Uh, and that's all subjective. That's just my opinion. So what I'm going to do next, after I publish this video, is I'm going to do a, a human-machine interface study. I've uh, recruited a couple of my friends to take this deck, take it home with them for a week, get used to the controls, and then actually do an edit test where you take a set of pictures, edit it your traditional way, go back, edit very similar or the same set of pictures using the loop deck, and time them to say, hey, how much time, if any, did this save you, and do you like the overall um, change in your workflow that comes with having dedicated controls versus the keyboard? the pointing device. That's my overall review of the loop deck. I think that there's a, there are a couple things they could probably improve through the, the software. Some of the things I don't like. Uh, the little clip that holds the, the cable in the back seems to uh, pop out very easily. And this doesn't have any uh, flip up feet to change the angle. So I've had to take mine and prop it up on my keyboard so it's at a more natural angle for me. I like to see that up at an angle some more. So you might have to prop it up against something or get one of those uh, 
uh, keyboard pads that have feet in it. Overall, I think it's a great first effort by the Loop Deck company that started this out as a, as a crowdsourced project. And I imagine if they sell enough of these units, it will see future panels with maybe even more controls on them. If you enjoyed this product review, please like and subscribe down below. Leave comments or questions and I'll get back to those as soon as I can. And as always, I'm Jim Setzer with Images by Design. Have a great day.